Okay, welcome everybody to Coffee and Art on Monday morning. I love my Mondays, but I need more coffee. Anyway, so thanks everybody for being here. We've just been doing a little chatting behind the scenes. And today we're going to work on the napkin journal. So I am a little zoomed in here, but I think we can do a little quick flip through it here. I think you'll still be able to see uh, see it. <clears throat> I'm going to use the napkins that Sharon wrapped up uh, Diva's treats in. And because uh, they're fall, so I'm going to use that. And as usual, I've been using the Whimsical Animals and the Big Monster by Juliet Crane. Um, I think she's doing some new classes. If y'all like Juliet Crane, I think. I see, I follow her on Twitter, so I think she may be doing some classes. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this is pretty much what we've been using. We've been using these two color books, to, mostly. Uh, we've used a few others, a fairy one and a couple other color books too. But these are the main ones. And I, I'm liking the Tree Branch Girls. So I'll probably put do something like these girls and then put um, the fall leaves in their, in their antlers. <laughs> and... Um, <clears throat> So, yeah, me, yeah, Karen, I know. Uh, luckily, you know, someone's asking about or talking about they're doing Inktober, and that's taken all their time. My Inktober has been minimalism. Uh, the kanji, I've been trying to concentrate on the kanji symbol and then putting the, the what it is, the symbol is, a little line drawing as minimal as I possibly can. I literally am trying to do the fewest, <laughs> I want it to be as minimal as I can on purpose. So I've been working on that. The other thing that I wanted to show y'all too <clears throat> is in our abandoned places. Y'all know we do our collage. Let me, here's one that we did. So, and I say we because if you're here when I'm doing it, we're all chatting and I feel like we all did it together. So anyway, here's one of the ones and you can see, you know, it's my mixed media collage bit, altered book bit. But I also wanted to show you, it, and it, it doesn't have to be, it probably would probably be better if it wasn't something this complicated. Maybe a, we did this page, it might even be better if it was maybe a magazine. Let me see, well, let me go ahead and use it since I pulled it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so take a page, whether it's in your altered book, whatever your altered book is, alt magazine, whatever you're altering, and take you a, a black Sharpie and a white, uh, this is a poster paint one, you know, the, the water-based uh, paint pen Sharpie or a Posca, and you could use Poscas for, color Poscas for what I'm going to show you, and I, maybe I'll pull a po color Posca just to make that point. But take, instead of doing well, or I do both, so I just don't want to say instead of, because I do both, but um, find you a page, and see here I've already done a white with the, with the Sharpie, but let's see, let's take, let's maybe take, um, let's go with, uh, what color do I want, blue maybe, let's go with the blue, no, I want a red, I think I'll go with red, oh, uh, whatever color, Posca paint pens, or any kind of paint pens. Okay, it's got to be, it really can't just be a marker. It has to be like a paint. It has to be paint. Or you could do this with a brush like we do, you know, normally. But go in and, and pick out areas to block out. I know Mary's wheels are already turning. Stick with Sebastian till you finish him. I want, I want to see what happens when Sebastian goes to the moon, Mary. <laughs> We're talking to Mary Altier. She's been doing a... Um, a story that she made up about a spider named Sebastian on Halloween. She's already done two parts. She's gonna. She said the third part will be, I think, this week. So anyway, <clears throat> because the paint pens will go over the slick book or slick magazine, and you could spend hours on one page, people. I'm telling you, <laughs> you can spend. A lot of time playing with your paint pens in a altered book and like some of these spokes I'm just ignoring the back spokes really and uh, maybe I should just ignore that back spoke too let's just make that one thing now the only thing you got to be aware of is you got to let this dry it takes a minute for it to dry or hit it with the heat gun either way 
but because uh, it'll smear because this is on a slick page so you have to give it a minute to dry or hit it with the heat gun so I just want to give you all this little since I'm not doing a society idea today Mary sorry this can be the idea of the day <laughs> this can be the idea of the day um use your paint pens in your altered book or altered you know your mini magazine mini magazine playground if y'all forget what that is I'll pull that out too and find something in there to real quick so I'm not going to number this as a society page like number 12 or whatever we're supposed to be on next this is not going to be in that but here's just an idea for you on Monday I try to do the society idea collectors three times a month usually on a Monday but this is one of the Mondays I'm not doing it okay so you see how cool that is now you got to set that aside so I'm just gonna put this to the side while I get the mini magazine out to show you how fun that is it's very relaxing <clears throat> so so in our mini magazine, your uh, uh, idea collecting uh, society. Well, it's kind of they all they all go together. <laughs> oh no, you had an oh, Aunt Lena had an ad. All right, Lena, let me show you again here. See, I did that with the Posca paint pen. Here, let me do one more little spoke for you. So. Yeah, sometimes it's frustrating to get an ad right when you want to see something. <laughs> and I don't do ad blocker. I mean, you can do ad blocker. I don't do ad blocker, but so. And this is just a Posca paint pen. You can use whatever the Sharpie ones. You know, so anyway, like that. It's really fun just to sit and, and doodle. Yeah. All right, so the same thing you can do if you have a magazine journal. Like here's a, the mini magazine journal. We worked in this, you know, a lot. Not as much as I'd probably like to, especially after Mary showed me up and did one that's a tome. <laughs> Mary, Mary has a tome. <laughs> just saying anyway um so yeah here's some little ladybugs but you can take one of your uh magazine pages here's a leaf all right so like here let's take the white and what if you just kind of filled in again this is kind of what you'd call i would call doodling right what if you just kind of filled in all the leaf veins and you don't have to do every single one I mean you know you could do some skip over some but let me do a little bit here and just play in your magazine journal or play in your uh, altered book it's just kind of relaxing I think And all it takes is a, and you could do it with black, sharpie, white, you know, color. So let me hold that up and see. See? Or what about if these leaf holes were bigger? You know, make them bigger, like the cut, the tears. And use your pen to block that out. You could even have a, a little world in there. You know? <laughs> you can do so much with just a couple of pins. You know, you could do them all black. You could do them a, a color. You know, this is kind of reds. So you could do it with, you know, yellows, oranges, or whatever. Turn it in, turn it into a fall see if this one's primed you could turn it let's start over here you could turn it into a fall leaf and do multiple colors you could do red yellow orange uh, 
I'm just giving y'all some little samples here. Do some red. Like it's turning into a fall leaf. And of course you do the whole thing or or not. See? Isn't that fun? Fall leaves are your fave. Well, then you're going to love today's napkin journal. Okay, so there's our little idea. Although I'm not numbering this as one of the Society of Idea Collector videos. I'm just throwing this out there as a bonus. There's a little bonus tip. There you go. All right. <clears throat> so... Let it dry, though, because remember, this is slick paper. It's not been uh, matte medium or anything. So it'll, it'll move. It'll smear. Okay, so now let's go over to our napkin journal, which we haven't worked in in a while. Galena, I need a quick reference. When you color with a light pencil and use a darker pencil, do you blend with the light color you use first? You mean like color, you mean color pencils, right? Um, well, I guess it kind of depends. And, and I'm going to preface this by saying, when I do portraits, I'm throwing all rules out. Because I so many of my portraits depends on the piece itself. But just in general, let's see here. Let me just grab it. Well, here, I'm going to color in here. So uh, I don't know what page or what we're going to do yet. You know, I want one of the girls. But um, draw and color your own characters. So let's just say we have, well, let's do a leaf. <coughs> um, like on my portraits, I start with white. But I wouldn't start with white, you know, necessarily anywhere else. On, a, on something else, like a, let's say a leaf. I would probably, I'm just thinking here, and I don't really have a rule. And I tell y'all that you know, when I'm coloring color book pages. I don't really have a rule. Oh, you got to start with the light color first. Got to do the shadows first. I don't really do it that way. I could go either way. I could start with the shadows here first. I think so much of it depends on the colors, too. You know, and then go in here and yellow... Could do the whole leaf yellow. See, I don't know that in this case it wouldn't matter. I could do the whole leaf yellow. And then go in there and start shading, blending. See, I kind of go back and forth so much. It's so much back and forth. It's hard to... And then so, so when I did this right here, so as I'm doing this, I'm talking out loud, trying to explain as I go. <clears throat> I'm just going back and forth between the yellow and the red, and kind of making an orange in there. Of course, we have orange pencils, but you know. <laughs> but now I'm looking at it. Oh, that's not enough shadow. I need some sienna. So I'd get a brown, and now I'd start in here with darker shadows. And then that'll need to be blended. So now I need to blend that. So I'll go back to the orange and blend the sienna in. You see how it works? It's like, it's not really a, you can't just say, okay, you do all the yellow, then you do the red, then you do the brown. It doesn't work that way. That That's one of the great things about pencils. You're constantly, <clears throat> you're constantly blending. See? See what I mean? Um, Trying to learn how to blend with color pencils instead of blender pencils. See, I've never used, I, I've never, I can't say I've never picked one up and done something with it, but I just don't use blender pencils. It just takes practice, Galena. It just takes a lot of practice. And the more you practice, the better you get at blending. See what I mean, Burn? Okay, I don't know if that helped. I would just say watch a lot of the videos that we've done because you just, you know, watch and learn. Okay, so now let me go back to the napkin journal here and do a little flip through. So what a napkin journal is, let me find a place where I just have one. All right, so here. Now, 
when the thing about the napkin journal I do use I always use in my collage golden matte medium because it doesn't stick your pages when you hear it sounds crunchy like these pages some of these pages might be sticking they're really not sticking what's happening is the texture of the napkins is making them sound like they're really sticking together but it's just the texture of the of the napkin they're really they're not pulling apart they're not sticking or anything with the golden matte medium if you use Mod Podge I can't vouch for not sticking in art journals <laughs> okay but in um, the magazine journal sometimes it sounds like they're sticking but really it's just the napkins kind of pull you know they're they're they've been touching okay so this is an old a journal that um, a day book that one of my sisters sent me for my birthday I think it was 2009 I covered up the date um, and I never I don't do date books I love planners I love calendars I love all that but not to do a daily uh, keep up with your life kind of thing now I am I like doing daily things and I got some plans for some other things for us to do but where you feel like oh I've got to write down oh, I can't do it I just me myself hey Julie I can't do it hey crusty brush so this is a napkin here <clears throat> the backgrounds of all these pages in my napkin journal the backgrounds are all napkins and then color book pages included and then blended together with acrylic paint so if you have any questions just ask so I'm going to flip through and show you all this is napkin and then paint. The branches have been painted to follow out from our antlers. Uh, this is from another color book page. This and, and, I'm, and I've been trying to mostly use my Juliet Crane books in here. But there's some other, there's some fairy books and some other things too. Um, a good part use my Podge on class this weekend, poor... Oh, well, that was not nice, though, Eileen. They yelled at her for using Mod Podge. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yell at people for using whatever they have. But I will tell you, your pages might stick with Mod Podge. I know you can wax them. I know you can keep pages behind, between them. I know you can powder them. There's ways to, but I don't want to do all that. <laughs> I don't want to have to do all that. So I just like my uh, Golden Matte Medium. And there were times where I have that this would be the my haul for the week because I especially when I did more collaging than I do now you know now we do more color booking than collaging but um, you know I, I went through a lot it never dries in Florida Mod Podge yeah <laughs> this one is from a fairy book and the background here guys all these fish and the seahorse uh, and I do have stickles on it there you can see the stickles uh, that's all napkin and then this is paint the splatter the stars the planets the little additional things that I've added that's all with acrylic paint but it all starts with the base of a napkin and so that's all I'm doing like here's a page where I've laid down a napkin it's ready for something um, so I'm going to flip through so you can see all the pages we've done napkins back here this is just just a page covered with napkins ready to go same for this so I'm just going to do a quick flip through here so you see we have lots of pages ready to go but there's quite a bit done in here too so you see how that sounded that's the texture what the weave of the texture of the napkins sticking together not the glue Okay, they're not, it, that sound you hear is from the napkins, not because it's of the glue. Okay, so here's one we've done. I really like this one. And again, napkins back here, color book page, color book page, napkins. This is, this is another napkin right here, a separate napkin. You can eat multiple napkins. <laughs> the, yeah, the Eileen said that the, so the one with the uh, mermaids, the Xandra page. This is two different napkins, maybe even three. And then this is all paint. So you paint it in to make it cohesive. Okay. This one was the one we did last year at Halloween with two different, maybe three different Halloween napkins. 
and then one of the napkins had these little um, pumpkins on, these little jack-o'-lanterns. So I cut some out and made it look like she was holding one. And this, she's a fairy out of a fairy book. I think she might have some, there it is, on her wings there. And then the moon, put some stickles on the moon. And then this is paint uh, with a baby wipe, a baby wipe paint uh, technique, you know, to make some mist and fog. Thanks, Selena. <clears throat> so again, all the backgrounds are napkins. This was a poppy and a, two separate ones, a poppy napkin and a bee napkin. Terry sent me that bee napkin. And again, we have stickles. So you can see on the, on the wings there. blank pages in there not nothing on them yet this is he, the little elf is out of I think the fairy book this is a napkin well two napkins probably but the sunflowers are napkins painted in the dirt painted in the stars painted in the little glow around his flower and then put stickles on the See, I'm gonna have to get some more stickles I, if there's any place I can buy them, Jen's bought them all out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's all kinds of things you can use. Just, we, you know, we just kind of, because we all had so many decorative napkins, I've given away boxes of them. I gave Button, Button bought a box of them. Well, she paid for the shipping of the box. I gave her the napkins. But, um, yeah, so there's <laughs> this one. Again, napkins here. Color book flower, color book bird, color book fairy, color book flower. And then a little bit somewhere. Oh, the bird's got some stickles on him. <clears throat> Thanks, Melissa. This is all napkins. Here's another one here. The yellow, the butterflies and the yellow daffodils in the background are the napkin. And then here's some extra napkins that I have. So today what I want to do is I'm going to find a blank page because I'm going to use some new napkins. These are from Sharon L. She had uh, the Divas cat treats wrapped up in these so I am going to use them because they're fall so I'm going to go ahead and prep both of them okay so what you have to do when you use a napkin let me get a piece of tape and uh, I credit Jean with this tip because that's who I saw it from she got she saw it from somebody else but anyway take a piece of double sided tape or just scotch tape and you want to take off the the white um, the white uh, backing. So let's get that started here. So if you just use a piece of double sided tape, it gets it started. See, so you can peel off that back layer. If you don't peel off the back layer, it's not going to glue down well because you're going to be just putting the matte medium on it here, and it's not going to go through to the page. So you want to take this off. Let me do both of them. You just stick it down and like almost, almost kind of like tear it up. Kind of like tear up, get a, you know, just get it to, say, you just get the tape to stick to that peel and then you just start peeling it up. The other thing though I want to say about, <clears throat> because you're taking the white background off, it makes the napkin translucent. <clears throat> so that means... That when you glue it down, you really want to start with a fairly white page. And I'll show you why. So see how bright and vibrant that napkin is on the white? Well, if you've already painted it, let me get some. Um, if you've already painted your page, prepped your background here if you've already prepped it with say some paint 
hey Ray, then what's going to happen is, see how vibrant that, and I got the air on because it's really stuffy in here and it's blowing my napkin. See how vibrant that looks? But if it would had been prepped with, say, brown or whatever, I got a piece of brown card, so look at the difference. See how you lose the vibrancy of the color? And the darker the paint, the darker your paint, the less vibrant your napkin is going to be. Now that's okay if that's what you want, but don't prep your page with dark paint if you want the vibrancy of the napkin to show, show up. You see? Debbie uses the white napkin part to jelly plate over. Ah, okay, yeah, I know. I wish I had more time to jelly plate. We need... <laughs> no, so many projects, so little time. So uh, that's why we haven't been in the napkin journal in probably some months. Okay. So just want to show you all the difference there of something behind it and something not. Okay. All right, so let me get, oh, it's pouring down right now. Let me get a, uh, get a little, uh, I use coffee lids for palettes and whatnot. All right, let me move this tape. Move my card list. Got to have room here. Move my markers. Okay, so I'm going to pour out some matte medium. And I put a little uh, baggie over the lid so that it doesn't stick. That's probably way too much. Um, it doesn't stick the lid. I know some people put Vaseline around the lid. This is just as easy to me. I just throw on, when this one gets crusty, I just replace it. Um, and of course, I'll be using baby wipes. I use Huggies Natural. Don't get ones with aloe, with scented, with soapy. Don't get those kind. Because uh, otherwise, when you're using your uh, baby wipes, especially in your collage, um, you'll be moving soapy stuff around. You don't want soapy stuff in your <laughs> collage. At least I don't. Okay, so let's see. Let me get a pair of scissors here and decide. I think I'm just going to cut this in half. I need to get me some more scissors. This one's got some tape on it or some glue. So let me get another pair. Um, I usually get them on sale at Hobby Lobby. They're the they're their paper studio brands, most of these, I don't know. Um, and they're only a dollar. So when they go on sale for a dollar, I'll get a couple pair. And then you don't care if they get sticky or I mean you still want to take care of them, of course, but you're not so worried about, oh I'm gonna mess up like my Timmy scissors that you pay a lot for, something like that. And um, so, yeah, so I'm thinking I might want the leaves to be coming down on the side over here and maybe kind of falling down on top of their heads. So, and sometimes you can pre, you know, I'm kind of thinking ahead here, but uh, you don't have to. You can just glue down. Oh, the other thing about gluing down, put some wax paper between your pages because you don't want to stick your pages together when you're matte medium and painting. I just use wax paper here. And I just re you know, now some of the some of these get kind of crunchy and crusty after a while. But you can see, look, I've used this one for painting other things. They, you know, as long as they're dry, you can fold them up and use them for again. Alright, so let's say I want some here. I want let's cut out a little more. Let's go across here. And you can, I'm going to probably overlap some. I want it to look almost like a fall leaf forest, right? Maybe that one on top of that. Let's see. So you can kind of see that the leaves are changing. Now, on your napkins, I don't mind going across the page because they're so dang thin. If this was a my altered book and I was gluing a collage element down, I would cut this. I'd cut it on the crease there and not glue into the crevice. But because the napkins are so thin, it's really not going to um, be, it's not going to bulk up your spine with the napkin like it would 
you know, and, and the opening and closing of it. This okay because it's so thin. But, let's see, let me trim this out. So, And I'm just kind of generally trimming it. After I glue it on, I can go and trim the edges. If y'all have it, hey, Sonia, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, if y'all need a link open, ask Janet or uh, Terry or Eileen to open links. Okay, and this, see this right here has a, like a line border. I don't really want that. I'm going to cut that line off. And you can tear if you want, but napkins are so, you know, uh, thin. You kind of tear it down like that. So then I'll put that one there. Let's see, maybe another one here. I cut that. I guess I didn't need to. Something like that. And I know some people keep the little bits left. I, I don't. I, I can't. I just can't. Too many bits. Okay, so there we go. I think that'll be enough. All right. Uh, oh, Matt Mead makes them not stick. Yes. Matt Medium. Matt Medium. My golden Matt Medium does not stick your pages together. That being said, if you just came in, Ray, uh, you, you could probably hear some of the pages in my napkin journal sounded like they were sticking. That's not the matte medium making them stick. It's the texture of the napkins that you're hearing. So, But it doesn't pull them off. It just sounds bad when you're using the napkin. Okay, so now I've got my glue, one of my glue brushes. These are the only brushes I keep in water. My glue brushes stay in water after I use them, and I use them for absolutely nothing else. <laughs> That's all I use them for is gluing. But you never get the glue out if you just try to clean your brush. You can spend hours trying to get glue out of your brush. So I use old brushes that are no longer any good for painting. I mean, you could still use them for something, but you know what I mean. Um, these are what I use for my glue brushes. Um... Is there any medium like markers or paint that you would not put on a prep napkin? Um, it depends on what you want to do with it. You have to remember, I use acrylic paint, which is uh, does not re doesn't reconstitute. Uh, when it's dry, you can put anything on it, and it's not going to move. So you have to be aware, and that's true of any collage mixed media project, art journal. You have, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm sure it's going to go, I'm going to, what is that? <laughs> um, and I probably should get a little better, smoother brush, because when you're doing napkins, you do have to be a little more gentle, you have to be a little more gentle because they'll, they can tear. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, not scrubbing down here, um. So whatever kind of art journal you're using, you have to be aware if you're using something that's neo color to watercolor, anything like that, it's it can reactivate. That's the word I was looking for. Can reactivate. And Napkins are the only thing I don't turn over and put matte medium on the back because you really can't without it, without gluing it down. Um, it's not like a little piece of color book page or something where you can turn it over, put matte medium on the back, turn it over, put matte medium on the top. You only, you, you really only have one shot at a napkin. Okay. So I can't really turn this over and put it on there and then pick it up. It, it just you can't really do that. So, all right. So here we go. I want it to be right to that edge. And again, if any of it hangs over after it dries, I will cut it down. So I want it in the crevice there, which I don't do with like magazine or calendar or anything like that. Don't put it in the crevice. It's, it just uh, bulks it up and open and close and open and close and it can tear. And it could do that with this too, but 
you know, if you really want to be safe, then just cut the napkin and leave a little bit of a space and put paint in there. <clears throat> okay. And they're just overlapping a little. They don't, it's not like I'm trying to match up a pattern. I'm really just trying to get leaves all around the edges. And this last little bit here. All right. And it is textury. There is texture to the napkins. So I just want to make sure everything's glued down well, but being gentle. Okay, is there any medium line? Oh, wait, I guess that's the same question. Let me make sure my chat's moving. <laughs> Let me do a test. There we go. Oh, wait, is there any medium? Okay, yeah, that was the same question. Okay, all right, so now let me put this aside, and I will hit it with the heat gun, and then I'm going to set it aside again to do a color book something. Pick out some, but let's dry it first. Or semi-dry it anyway. over matte medium if that was the question now remember when we did the the matte medium or no that was a gesso if you put down matte medium gesso any kind of barrier between your paper and watercolor stuff it's you got to remember that's going to prevent the watercolor from seeping into your main paper okay which can be a good thing like say you're doing a color book page some people like to gesso their pages so it doesn't go through however it changes the way watercolor works watercolor floats on top of gesso or matte medium it's not going to give you the same effect that you might get on just plain old watercolor paper right that's why people that do watercolors don't gesso their watercolor paper they want the paper, they want it to, you know, sink and float into the paper, not on top of the paper. So when you put that matte medium gesso or whatever on your page, it's going to make your water mediums float. Does that make sense? And that's okay if that's what you want to do. But, and you're going to have trial and errors when you use any kind of mixed medium. I don't know why Mod Podge is sticky. I don't know about Decopodge. I've never used Decopodge if that's something different that you're talking about. Matte medium works for me. It always has. Golden matte medium is to me the best collage glue ever. It's more expensive. But you use coupons and you <laughs> stuff like that. got a lot of cleaning done this weekend. Well, I'll wait on done here. Nothing beats golden matte medium, I know. I'll wait on done here to talk. It doesn't have to be 100% dry because I'm going to set it aside for a minute. I just want it not to be, you know, really wet. Okay. So I'm just going to set this whole book aside for a minute, off to the side here, while I look through these two books. And I probably want to get three, oh, we'll see how big they are, at least two or three. I want some of the girls that have 
like let's bring this back again that have the antlers to look like it's going up into the trees do you see what i'm saying this might be a, even be a good one let's tear this one out as a possibility i like that maybe and see it's got the trees too um and i might cut it down so that she's down here more um and i'd probably cut some of these out and draw in my own don't be afraid to not use a whole page all right so let's just kind of flip through here that's a good one too but it doesn't have the tree i i mean the side trees i like this one better it just has more limbs let's start at the beginning and i've torn a lot of pages out of here we've used a lot of pages this is the juliet crane um big monster Col 34 original drawings to color and make your own and then the other one is her whimsical animals so let's just do a little let's flip from the back it's easier that's kind of a good one if i did this one i could get another somebody looking the other way but i really like this little girl's face so i might go with it anyway maybe go get some more coffee here that's a good one too maybe both of these let's see maybe these two girls something like that but i kind of wanted to get a one of the animals in there too so let's see these are really fun to use in your collage almost like her better down here if she was down here then I still have room for an animal up there but these kind of look like they're sisters or something hey Karen okay let's go to the animals we'll start with at least these two I could get an animal maybe in here or something all right let's flip through the animal book I think there's like two or three of each in here. I like the owl. The owls always work well up in the trees. That one's a good one because it looks like it's looking down. Little fox, that's cute. Okay, I think I'm going to stick with these. All right, let's move the books out of the way. All right, I think I like this one. So let's just kind of, I'm just going to kind of cut, not, not real close, but because I can always trim, but I just want to kind of fit them in. And they're going to probably be half covered up anyway with each other. All right, so if this one was kind of up here looking down. See, here's a place where you, you just don't like to have, <laughs> you want to cut it. So I think I'm going to cut this off anyway. And a little bit going across there, but I don't really want a bunch of bulk in the spine. So if that one's there, you see how we're working it? <laughs> and then this girl, and I think I'm going to cut them out and then maybe the trees separate because I don't want to cover up all the leaves or I might just paint in the tree branches. So I think I'm just going to kind of work around here. 
and we're going to paint a lot of this in. I don't really want those roses in there. And let's see how far down I want her to be. Probably about right there. I might use that tree, might not. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's go to the other girl. Snip for the ditch. Yeah, snip for the ditch. Yeah. I mean, it's just best. It's just best. You, you don't have to. Like uh, this little horn thing, this little branch is probably going to go over. Or I can just cut it off and paint in my own. You know, paint in my own branches, which I'm going to do a lot of painting in anyway. All right, so let's. Then you know exactly where you want to sit her, too. Something like that. Tilt her up maybe just a little. Lean her in. Alright, let's do this one. And if you don't want to cut them all out like this, you could use a whole, you know, as much of it as you want. But I'm the point is is to have the napkin. Working in the napkin, right? see where do I want her do I want her kind of maybe I want less owl showing more branches the branches can still be coming across him because he could be hiding in the trees so something like this let's see I want her a little farther down maybe her something like that maybe so let's trim off the bottom of her. <clears throat> okay. Now, a couple more tips. And these are good. These, these pieces right here are worth saving. I'll just stick them in the color book, you know, and they could still be used along with this other owl we didn't use. So I'm just going to stick that in the you want to, if you're using color book pages in your napkin journal, you want to color them first before you glue them in. Otherwise, let me fold this up. Might need another leaf right there. That, mm, might want another leaf right there. Eh, I'll just paint. Um, the reason you want to color them not in the book is because if you start coloring here, like on their face, you're going to pick up the texture. It'll be like a rubbing. You'll be picking up the texture of the napkin when you color. So don't glue them in and then try to color them. You could glue them in and paint them, okay, if all you were going to use was just paint, and that's mostly what I'm probably going to use, but I wanted to show, show you both, okay? So if you want a color pencil like the faces, which I'll probably color in the faces, and I'll probably use paint for the rest, um... Don't don't glue them in and try to uh, pencil on top. All right, so let's see. Let me move some of this out of the way. Okay, I, I guess there's no more questions. So I think um, let me just get a couple of flesh tones here. Let's get a uh, because I'm like I said, I'm gonna probably mostly use paint. One a little darker, one a lighter girl, maybe some white. Okay, so let me go ahead and sharpen a little bit. Do you have any questions? Hi, 3G. Who else am I missing? I'm sure I'm missing some girls. All right, so I'm just going to do their faces, and the rest I'm probably going to do with paint. So this girl, I'm just gonna start with the flesh color here and just, oh, see, I'm picking up texture. I just what I told y'all not to do. <laughs> 
And these are kind of some gray scale, so you're, it, everything's going to show through. So like the shadows are still showing through. So I'm going to do her light skin and this girl I'm going to do darker. So I'll put her with a sienna base. And I don't really over color these over. This isn't like, uh, for me, these aren't like a color book page. You can take as much, okay, I need something not, no bumps. Um, you can take as much time as you want, but on these demos here for the color book napkin, I mean the napkin journal, I try not to, you know, I want to get to the napkin. <laughs> I mean to the journal, not just sit here and color for y'all. Okay, I've got something bumpy here. I need something smoother to color on. Let's get my book back out here. There we go. I'm picking up texture from my desk. I need to put another layer of paper. Over my um, desk. Just put a. Now, when I go to paint things, I can have them glued in for that. Like their clothes, I'm going to paint their clothes and stuff like that. They can be glued in for the acrylic paint. But with pencil, you're picking up so much texture. Everybody with me, Vern? Ah, oh, thanks, Mary. All right, now I'm going to take the sienna that I used on her base and do a little bit of shading over here. I'm just kind of following the shading that's on here. Again, I'm not really... And you could take as much time as you want. I'm just not taking as much time because <laughs> I want to get into the napkin journal so we can finish it and not just sit here and, and color her. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of shading. And see the brown there or the gray? That's already there. So I'm just going to kind of let that do the work, so to speak. Okay, let's go back over to her. Now I'm going to take the darker brown here and do the same thing. And do some shading. Those are two girls. The owl, maybe I'll go ahead and do his little face. Uh, where's my sienna color? And the rest will be paint. And he'll probably be in oranges so that he'll fade uh, into the leaves. Because it's a fall page. If y'all haven't figured that out. <laughs> That'll be enough. Okay, so let's go ahead now and glue them in. Now, I've not had problems with my 
rarely I should say and I think it kind of maybe depends on how much you put on I've not had problems with my pencil smearing with the matte medium but I don't scrub on it I don't sit there and go you know I guess I could make the, the pencil move all right so now I'm gonna put go back on here put another layer of matte medium now here I can turn it over and put some on the back because it's not going to glue it down, you know, like a napkin would. And I want him just like almost off the edge there. And then I'll trim it down here in a little bit. Okay. And then I'll put this on top. The napkins like almost cling to your page. If you want this smooth, then take a card, take you a, you know, whatever kind of card here and just kind of smooth them down. Now, again, I'm not going to mash down onto my color pencil. I'm just doing it gently and just kind of, you know, gluing them down. Okay. And he's off the edge. I'll trim that later. Okay. Alrighty. I don't know. I hope I'm explaining it all well enough. Okay. So let's just put down. Got to pour me a little bit more matte medium. And this is another thing too, when not necessarily in the napkin journal, but in any kind of collage, um, any kind of collage. Let's see, I want her a little bit more up here. I think kind of leaning in. Um, see, I don't want that bulk right there. Let's separate that. Put it over here. Um, where was I going? I'm trying to trying to think of explaining too many things at once. Oh, people ask me about wrinkling um, your pages buckling, like especially on mixed media in my mixed media books in my art journals. And I explain to them that by the time you get all these layers down, because we've got the napkin in this case, but it could be a magazine image. You have your magazine image. You have matte medium. You have more images. You have more matte medium. Then we're going to paint. So by the time you get so many layers down on your page, it almost reflattens everything out. You know? So I'm just smoothing it down. Now you're you're not you're still gonna have some texture there because of the napkin, but it's fine. It's a napkin journal. Okay, other girl, where do I want, did I want her? Do I want her a little, do I want them kind of tilting in a little? Let's see, I kind of, yeah, I need her horn to come, or her branch to come up that away. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to elongate her, her branch so she can be a little bit more down here, and then we'll connect this with paint like that okay so let's put some so a little in because we're going to paint in all the branches Smooth it out kind of as best you can there. Being gentle on the pencil. Okay. I think that's good. Okay. I think I'm done with the matte medium, so I'm going to put my glue brush back in the water. It has its own little tub. Alrighty. Let's see. Move my pencils. Move the matte medium. Move the make space got to keep shuffling all right now let's hit it with the heat gun and again this is why you have your wax paper so that you don't glue your pages together 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and trim this little guy's head down just because it's sticking over a lot. So what do y'all think so far? How's it looking? Let's hit it with the heat gun. Hey there, Terry. Yeah, I'm fearless. <laughs> no fear. <laughs> I've told y'all the story about Boo, my granddaughter. She's always crafted with me. Well, Cam is always arted. Boo's more the crafter. And uh, when she first went to pre-K with her school glue and her little kid scissors with the rounded, <laughs> with the rounded thing that they had to have, you know, what, she, what the schools did or maybe still do when they're little. Hang on, let me finish this. I don't want to yell. Sometimes you get people to oh yes. I have in my coloring book, uh, Miss Vicky. Yes, I have. Let me um we just did one. Where is it? Hang on. We just did one in uh here's our blue girl here. I do especially in Jasmine. Jasmine girls are kind of, you know, creepy cool. So, yeah, I do green skin. I do blue skin. Do a little every color skin. Let's see here. Let me get my... And hi, Miss Vicky B, by the way. In my color binder here. Let me flip. Let's see if I can find a couple. Here's my vampire. She's got blue skin. Um, let's see which other ones might have something different. Here's my little, well, she has, she's kind of small to see much skin, but, uh, what else is in here? Here's, uh, one of my dark skin girls. Um... My jasmine girls probably have the most, you know, like here's, this girl has blue and white and water. This girl is blue. Um, here's my redhead with the fair skin. And my mermaid girl with the dark hair and the braids. She didn't have braids. I made the braids for her. So she has braids. Let's see what else. Oh, here's a purple girl. <laughs> There's a purple girl with her pumpkin date. And there's the other jasmine girl. And then here's a purple <laughs> harvest of the corn kid, child. She has purple skin. So yeah, there you go, Miss Vicky. Different colors of... <laughs> All right, so, but this is my most recent one. You need to see... <laughs> oh, you're talking about Janet the Beast? Yeah, Janet has... Yeah, you would love that, Vicki, you being the planner girl. Janet has one of those, um, the grid, Mick, Mike, Mick, well, I forget what it's called. Janet can put it in there for you. She has one of those gridded faux bonichis. And, oh my gosh, it's a beast. It really is the beast. I hope she'll link it for you. Um, to ask about doing more unnatural skin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, um, you just have to go look at my color book playlist, and you'll see thumbnails. of. And you, there should be enough of a thumbnail for you to see what color skin I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. Oh, back to the boo thing. So when I said someone eats sells fearless with the scissors, it reminded me of Boo when she would go to pre-K back in the day. Now she's almost 15. Um, 
she would uh i can't I, I even saying that i can't believe it she you know you would turn in all your supplies to the teacher at the school you just take a bag of all your stuff the scissors the glue and the teacher would dole it out as it was needed right so when boo first got her school glue and her little mini scissors with the blunt edge she asked the teacher where's my eileen's tacky and she held up those little blunt scissors because we heard from the teacher and i think boo said too what are these <laughs> she's been used to using this is what she grew up using <laughs> tim holtz <laughs> and they give her these little kid scissors with no point or nothing and she went what are these <laughs> Where's my Eileen's tacky glue? <laughs> she grew up, she's always used, she's always been able to use my heat gun. And I taught them how to use these things. The only thing I never let them use until they were old enough to, you know, and I still don't really like them using it, is the big guillotine cutter. You know, that's the only thing that they were not allowed to use. Anything else in the studio, they were allowed to use, right? <laughs> okay so let me go back and let me i see a couple little places here that still need a little more drying thanks gary yeah boo of course the, this is before i started uploading to youtube but boo has been on here before you know like five six years ago and we did one year we did um she used to make all her this is one of her little this is one of her silly band bracelets. I just have it on. Um, she um, she did a Finnabar 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 project on frame. She made all her Christmas presents that year, and she did uh, she did spend an afternoon, and we did it here on the show one time. It's not on YouTube because, like I said, it it was before I uploaded to YouTube, and uh, and we did frames those cheap one dollar michael frames that you get that are just wood and we did the finnabar thing where you pile on everything <laughs> you know you pile on old metal and flowers and all kinds of junk and you just sell the whole thing you paint the whole thing white and then you splatter on all colors of ink and paint and then black and then gold and she made a whole bunch of those one year for christmas and that was good times that was good times so, okay, so now let's get out some paint. Let me move my pencils back in here. Let me get out some um, tray here. Let me move my baby wipes. My coffee is ice cold. Okay, so now, like I said, I want them to be a, a fall look. So I'm going to pull out, of course, fall colors. So let's see here. Let's pull out these colors. All right, so I'm going to tell you the colors that I got here, um, and maybe another brown, one thing browner. Let's see what's this color? Antique marine. Okay, we'll go with these. All right, so these are colors I just pulled. We'll see. There may be more. Um, have you or anyone else used the stencil cutting heat tool? Yeah, no, I don't. Pacola, I know there's some people that have, and it's been a while since I've seen anybody use it because now everybody cuts them out with, cuts their stencils if they have a cameo, a cutter, a cutting machine, or you know, silhouette, you know, one of the cutting machines. So same thing for me, and that's something I should pull out. I probably have some leaves. I'm gonna do that. Let's. I'm gonna tell you the colors, and then I'm gonna set this aside for a second. We're gonna pull out some. Thanks, Pacola, for saying that because it reminded me to pull out some cutouts and use them on this page okay so I'm gonna use I have pulled anyway antique maroon brilliant red persimmon orange twist heritage brick and I'm gonna need um, some kind of a yellow here what do I want spicy mustard that'll work just because they're fall colors um your ginger snaps are allowed to use any of your supplies but some they must ask before using or it would be complete and utter chaos yeah well now when they were littler they always pretty much asked you know can i use this ink can i use that pink and pretty much i'd let them use anything 
except the, the guillotine cutter, right? <laughs> um, okay, so now let me get where it's under here. Let me dig. My cutouts, let's see, under my mat. Oh, what's this in my way? I mean, move this, move this. I think those are my bigger pieces. I just need littler stuff. I think the littler stuff is all in this old binder. So I took this old Technique Tuesday stamp binder, and this is it's a binder. It's a zip up. It's got a handle. Back when I did a lot of stamping, maybe not that well, but I did more of it in scrapbooking. But anyway, so I don't put my stamps in this binder. I put my cameo cutouts, the smaller ones. The smaller ones are in here. Let me see if I can back out. I'm pretty much... Have you seen the new paints in the tubes? Are they the same as the acrylics? Um, yeah, I've seen them, but somebody said they're satin, Miss Vicki. I've not used them. I need to buy one just to test. But somebody told me that the Deco Art acrylics in the tube, which was what Miss Vicki, I think, is asking about, they said they were satin. They have a sheen to them. The problem with any kind of acrylic paint with a sheen or gloss is your color pencils cannot be used on top of it. So that's why I haven't bought any. And they may not, but somebody told me that. So, And the thing is, is these craft paints are so inexpensive. You can get these for like a dollar. Sometimes even less on sale, you, you know. 20% off your total purchase, that kind of thing at Michael's, or Hobby Lobby is, you know, same. They got, they carry Americana. Uh, yes, I know, Suzanne. I need to do another face-to-face -face with Her Majesty Camille. Seems like the only time that I do face-to-face um, -face is when I'm doing cameo cutouts, because I have no reason. I mean, you know, I don't have the camera set up where you can do both. And so it's either one or the other. And, you know, we're all about the projects. But when I do my cameo cutting out, I usually do a face-to-face -face every couple, two, three months. So I can just, you know, so you all know that I'm more than just a set of hands. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about They're probably great if you're just doing just paint, Miss Vicki like in an art journal or something. But again, you got to be careful with satin and gloss paint can stick things. So be careful in an art journal. I would definitely test in the back. But the reason that I love Americana is, for one, I know them. I know the colors, I mean. I don't know them. I know my, I know my Americana colors. And the other thing is um, there no, there's no gloss or sheen to them. So, yeah. As y'all can see here, I'm going to tilt up. So here's my, this is, it's a little dark there, but look, let's see. Here, here, all that's Americana, here. See, here's all my pencils and markers. That's paint, that's paint. There's paint in there. All these little things right here are all Americana paint. Plus over here, I got my paint um, thing that Ken built, the paint wood paint holder and there's two more layers down underneath there or one more yeah you can't see another layer down there so so there's all my paints my pencils my washi tape here we go I know I've shown you all this before I built this I built this right here on top this is all out of foam board foam core these are those little dollar crates like there's one two three four five six seven of those little crates then here's my build, but on top there's a shelf, so I have a whole top area on top of the shelf there. So all this is literally, see, I can just reach right here. It's literally within arm's reach, every bit of this. Okay, so let's get situated again. All right, so what I'm going to do is I have all my, <laughs> thanks Amanda, uh, I want to go through here and pick out some leaves or some something. Here's some feathers. See, I forget what I have. These are all cameo cutout things. These are cool little feathers, see? And I, this is the negative space. This is where I've cut the leaves out. So I keep a few of these. I don't keep every one of the 
of the uh, area that's been cut out but I try to keep a little bit of each one so that this is where I can use a stencil so when somebody was at Picola or who somebody was asking about uh, using the uh, the heat tool to cut out in plastic see I can just cut these out and even if it's only good for one use then so be it Okay, so I'm going to look through here for some leaves. Now, the last time I went through here, I gave a lot of it away, so I, I don't know. I may not have a lot in here because I may have given it a lot of it away. Um, see, look, I've got big empty spaces. Here's some little feathers, but they could be con like leaves. I could almost use them as leaves. Oh, there's all Now, see this kind of stuff. Some of these might be good. I haven't used any of these for a while, like this one down here. These would be good to sit in front of the girls. I'm going to paint them, of course, but maybe a few of these. See how delicately you can cut on the Cameo? <laughs> Thanks, Miss <Ms>. Vicki. <laughs> so let's I'll get a couple of these out, maybe. And uh, the other thing, too, is if you cut out on everything out in white, like this one we used on a jelly plate, I think, or spray inks or something. But if you cut everything out on white paper, then you can color it any color you want. So you got much more usage. There's a bunch of some gears there. I don't want any gears there. They're falling out. Uh, if you cut things out of white. See, I could use this. Maybe I'll use this as a stencil today. Why is this one in upside down? <laughs> this one's upside down. And even if I only get one use out of it, it's still fine because I can always cut more, right? So maybe we'll do a little bit of stenciling today. All right, let's see. I love my tree here. This here's I keep this one to show how delicately things that you can cut out on the cameo. Look at this, guys. Look how look at that. This is how intricate you can cut on the cameo silhouette. Look at that little heart right there. That's a little heart. See that? How how delicate that is. That's how detailed you can get. Oh, here's a leaf. At least one. There's a leaf. Oh, and a mushroom. Okay, a leaf and a mushroom. Maybe we'll use those. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I probably need to do another uh, cutout. So, Mom used some of these, I think, for Christmas cards. And my large ones, like my world, I have the whole world cut out. Uh, that's in the box. I have a 12 by 12 box. Because uh, the bigger ones, I don't want to fold them up and put them in here. So they're in a big box. There's another leaf. And, and see, so you can also cut out, like this one I cut out, of scrapbook paper. So you can cut out um, on your scrapbook paper and have designs and patterns already printed on your items. So there's another use for all of that scrapbook paper. Here, see, look, this, this, another one of those swirls, that's cut out of scrapbook paper. Here's some Halloween card things I made with pumpkins on. So I cut this one out of black paper and mounted it on orange. Here's one. You could probably see better just like that. So, yeah, I guess we probably need to do another face-to-face -face with the cameo. Here's an owl. Some of these we've done different things with. There's an owl there. Cut out of black paper. This one we inked. It's got some shiny uh, paint or something on it. If y'all have not seen, go back and look for my, I think it might be under craft uh, paper crafting playlist look under the paper crafting playlist and you'll see me working you know doing different things with uh, with the cameo here's a little little manger I made some cards or maybe I sent them to mom to make cards I don't remember but the other thing about look you can make them different sizes 
So here's a small one. Um, you can make them up to as wide as your machine is. My machine goes to 12. Uh, and as long as you want, you can roll, you can make things, you can make scrolls. Uh, but 12 inches is the widest. So I can make this little manger like this big. But I think I made these either for some cards for somebody. I forgot. I thought I was thinking it was mom, but I'm not sure. Oh, there's another mushroom. Let's get another mushroom. Oh, and there I see my um, Eileen's thing that she made me here a while back here. Well, some years ago probably. Just missed more leaves and a mushroom. I did? Okay. More leaves and a mushroom. Yeah, that's, but those are on scrapbook paper. I just want to use the white ones. I lean, oh, this is, is this a, oh, it's washi taped together. I think, she, yeah. Oh, that's her name. <laughs> Eileen's name is in there. We did something with Eileen. I don't know. <laughs> and then there's one of her digi. This is one of, one of Eileen's digi. Let me dig that out. I printed it out. It says, oh, my cameo. Because, you know, she's Her Majesty Camille. That's what I named the cameo, Her Majesty Camille. So Eileen did me this little digi. It says, oh, my cameo. <laughs> I still stay with my cameo. And then she made me these. Here's the skates. So these skates are layers paper piecing so let's just take a little rabbit trail so that's it's cut out in silver and then it's cut out in cream and here's a pair that's done just so you can see so Eileen made these little skates look at that Janet Janet do you have any of Eileen's little skates I bet you don't clutch your pearls girl clutch your pearls <laughs> So then she, that's little um, embroidery floss for the little, the little laces. Isn't that just as cute as a button? <laughs> I love my little Eileen. <laughs> uh, sorry, Janet, had to rub it in. So yeah, there's some more to make some more here. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> and then letters. This is a bunch of monograms I cut out for Boo. Um, embossed paper here. Some more embossed. This is all embossed stuff in there. Uh, what else do I have back here? Okay, here we go. So here's a leaf cut out with scrapbook paper. Out of leaf paper. So this is a, a scrapbook page of all printed leaves. And I cut out a leaf out of the leaf paper. You don't have to skate clutching away. <laughs> okay, so here's some more leaves. Oh, and also got all kinds of coffee cups. These are just sitting in here. I must have had a, I must have done a uh, big cut day, and they're just all thrown in here. Like this one, I'll use one of those. Oh, I won't use the coffee cups today, but there's also, and you can make again. The thing about the cameo is you can cut these any size. I can cut these like a one-inch coffee cup or a 12-inch coffee cup. Uh, there's a bunch of gears. Here's another leaf. I'll probably paint those up just to see. I may not use them all. Some feathers, birds. That's a cute bird. Maybe, well, I got the owl. Um, here's a crow or a raven. Here's a giant there's my this oh I cut this to show you how big you can see look at this owl see how big you can cut <laughs> you can cut this big or you can cut an owl I don't know if I have one here a little tiny you know all right so let's see if I got some more got some more leaves in here leaves coffee cups gears what else ah oh, here's some Halloween um, haunted house with the spider. Maybe I should do a giveaway with these. Look. Look at the detail in this. And really they're better in, in the Halloween if they're cut out in black. Well, maybe I'll do that this week. Maybe Wednesday we'll do a cameo day and do some Halloween cutouts or something. I don't know. But it's just kind of, look at the detail. See the little spider? 
pumpkin. So I got a couple of those. Some more leaves cut out of scrapbook paper. Cut the birds out of paper. She's up to no good with a thong man. <laughs> Don't know. Oh, look here. Look at the mummy. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest thing ever? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm really looking for okay here's some more well, that's a coffee cup with leaves let's see. Oh, here's a big leaf that's gonna probably be I'll pull this out but it's gonna probably be too big but we'll see uh, here's another little leaf here's a feather I'm not gonna use feathers today but just so you can see the delicacy of the cutouts yeah face-to-face -face cameo day maybe we'll do that on Wednesday we'll see see if I'm up to put, putting on some makeup <laughs> Ah, oh, here we go. There's some smaller ones. Yeah. See, I can roll out. I, well, I'm way up. I've been up for hours by the time I stream. But I could, I could if I wanted to, just roll out of bed and stream, you know. Because, you know. Here's a leaf cut out of cloud paper. Here's some more cut out of clouds. A feather cut out of scrapbook paper. So, just to give you an idea. There's a nice oak leaf, but again, I think this these might be a little big. Do I have a smaller, smaller ones? Because I gotta fit them on the uh, page, right? I gotta fit them on the uh, napkin journal. Some gears. Okay, so what do we got in here? Ah, oh, let's see. How, okay, here's now. I'm not gonna use this today, but here, look how big this leaf is. See? How pretty? birds lots of little birds looks like a little robot head um, I don't want to go through all this right now we'll go through it oh let me throw you show you this one though <laughs> look at this lawn chair <laughs> isn't this awesome how many of y'all remember this <laughs> lawn chairs like this do they even make these kind anymore with the webbing <laughs> <laughs> Give us a hi, Mary. Look, do y'all remember this? The lawn chairs <laughs> with the webbing. All right, so I don't know what all else is in here. You want to see? Okay, here's the little robot head. Where was that little face? The robot face was separate. Ah, here we go. Come back here, little robot head. No, that's a coffee cup. Anyway, there's a robot, and the little face was separate, but I don't know. It was, you, I showed it to you just now, but I don't... Ah, here it is. So there's our little there's our little robot. How cute is that? Coffee cups, all kinds of coffee cups and coffee mugs. There's one that looks like Starbucks. Okay, so I just put pieces of paper between them because, you know, they're delicate. And they will... They'll tangle. The little bits, like these kind right here, can tangle very easily. Isn't that pretty? Book, you could turn these into bookmarks. You could back them with the, you know, if you put this on black paper. Um, and then you could laminate them. And they'd be really pretty bookmarks. Or some of the, some of the girls do that Bible journaling with cut in, with cut um, tip ins or glue ins, whatever. That would fit. What else? Here's another one with the kind of filigree look. All right, so then we got wings. We have more of these. Okay, so let's turn the page. What else do I have in here? So I keep them in folders and try to keep them in the plastic sleeves and the page protectors, but, you know. Here's one that we ran through, I think, a jelly plate. There we go. Jelly plate. More leads. Okay, here we are. Getting into more leads. This is what I was heading for. And they've been cut out on the blue paper, but I can just turn it over and and you know paint it. All right, I want I really want some of these, but smaller. These oak leaves. I think they're oak leaves. 
Okay, here we go. Another one of those, maybe. Lots of coffee cups. Maybe, you know what? Maybe the girls in the picture could be each have a little coffee cup. Maybe they're drinking tea in the fall. Let's do that. What else is in here? Another mummy. <laughs> so, yeah. Another huge owl is under there. Some more leaves. Gears. Coffee cups. A couple of coffee cups out. Birds. Okay, so let me slide this over. See, I need to really organize this notebook. Really need to. We're going to get back to the napkin journal in just a minute. Oh, here's the pretties. Here is where we have cut things out and glittered them. This one was done on the, um, what do you call it, the uh, jelly plate. Jelly plated the feathers and then glittered them. That's a pretty feather there. That mummy is a daddy. <laughs> so see what the pretty things you can do. Here's a silver one. Some of them are torn because I haven't taken care of them. There's a silver one in there, I see. Let's see if I can get down to it. Silver and blue. See, here's... I need to really organize this. Here's one. See, there's half a one with blue glitter and silver. Here we go. Black and silver and glitter. Yes, I need to make some more of these things. You know, we just have so many projects, so little time. There's part of the silver one. So these are some that we've jelly plated. Here's some leaves we've made, jelly plated leaves. They're just a little too big for what we're doing today. So anyway, yeah, these are jelly plated, painted, half feathers. Here's the half of the other half of that feather with the turquoise glitter and the silver. See, they're very fragile. Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. Rabbit trail now for sure. Okay. Here is, look at the delicacy of that coffee pot. What else is in here? More coffee cups and leaves. Okay, these are all very delicate. Okay, another folder. Now, these are some cards I made a few years ago. Reindeer. And I put a, I think I put a big fuzzy ball on his nose. Are you getting ideas, Mary? Mary might have already run away to go do projects. <laughs> Mary's that way. She'll get a, she'll get a, she'll get a, a what do you call it? Uh, a bee in her bonnet and she'll go, she'll go for it. So here's, this is to show you how you can manipulate the shapes. Look, you can stretch them out. You can compress them. I can make them long and skinny, tall and, you know, however. Oh, here's the world. Oh, I do have one of my worlds. Where's that black paper? This is one of my favorites. Look at this. Look at the globe that you can cut out. Look how thin that is. Although I think I got it backwards. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? There's one that we painted. Okay, here's some more borders and things. Some more leaves. Oh, here's a Christmas banner. This is a Christmas wreath. that You could put anything in the middle, and it's got the little reindeers going around the top. Isn't that cute? And again, you can cut these out in any color. Okay, here's another leaf. I'll use this one. I'll probably just take that apart. What else is in here? Here's a little bird or something. No, that's a, oh wait, this is my fox. My poor little fox. He's a little beat up. There's a little fox there with his tail. 
Okay, I need to quit. So, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry. Look at the giant typewriter. Oh, and we, we did do the jelly plate this. But this is what it looks like. And you can scroll out something out of it. Okay, I gotta stop. <laughs> Got more folders. We'll have to definitely do a cameo show. That was when I get, did some giveaways there. There's some tinier, oh, some butterflies in here. Well, I'm doing fall, so. But let me show you a butterfly or two here. See, this one's on blue. Okay, so we're going to stop. If y'all want to know more about it, we'll do it on um, maybe Wednesday. If I have time to put on a face, my face. <laughs> uh oh um, before I stream. Okay, so I won't put this away away. I'll just kind of set it aside because we're going to use this stuff. All right. All right. Now, back to our napkin journal. Should be nice and set up by now. Let's put some paint back in. I mean, some nap. What do you call it? Wax paper back in here. And now I have these little leaves and things over here. So I think while I'm painting here, I'll probably paint some of these little leaves or mushrooms, some colors, like probably, you know, orange, red. But I don't know yet because I want to do the background first. And then we'll paint these up and they'll be accents. In other words, like, you know, like this. See? But I want my little girls to have their little coffee cups. And I'll do them so that they stand out. So I'm going to paint all this first. And then we'll paint these to make them work. So like each one can have their own little coffee cup. Okay, I think that's the plan. All right, so let's get back to our paint here. All right, so I'm just going to put out a little bit of each. Let's put out a little bit of maroon, a little bit of heritage brick. Uh-oh, let me get a, let me get a something clean that off. A little brilliant red persimmon. Orange twist and spicy mustard, which is almost out. <laughs> Okay, I think I want one darker brown, too. Let's see, do I have something darker? That's antique maroon. Well, maybe I'll just stick with the antique maroon. All right, so I'm probably going to paint most of this with my finger and a baby wipe. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, thank you. Ted. Yeah, you, you only see me with makeup. <laughs> oh, all right. Although I do want to see if, in this case, I wouldn't care if I'm out in the woods, if I didn't have any makeup on. But at, by, at our lake place, there is a old graveyard. It's like, it's abandoned. It's like an old family graveyard. And Hubster knows how to find it. It's like deep in the woods. You have to really hunt up this graveyard. And I'd like to go in there and do some rubbings while the graveyard is still even because you know eventually it's probably going to get plowed over and turned into a you know something you know somebody will buy the property or something so i think i'm going to get them to next time i go to the lake and maybe i'll take my phone and film film us going to the little graveyard and getting some rubbings what do y'all think Maybe we'll do that. Get the I'm trying to get some of the uh, matte medium off my fingers here. Because um, I would love to do rubbings of those graveyards. I mean, they're like really old. I don't even know how. I don't remember. He told me years ago. I mean, you know, been going there for Hubster's family have been there since he was, let's see, 50, 50, 55 years is how long they've had that property. So, yeah. Yeah, take you with, yeah. Now, I don't know, there's there's no Wi-Fi, so I don't know how, you know, data-wise, I mean, if it'll pick up, if I can hold a 
cell phone data, you know, use my data. Uh, I don't know how, you, so, you know, usually at the lake, th there's cell phone towers and you can usually do data. I don't have Wi-Fi in the woods, obviously, but I can at least record it. I could record it on the phone and upload it to YouTube when I got back because I couldn't put it on until I had Wi-Fi. Does that make sense? All right, so let's see. So now I'm going to start with the edges. And once I get the edges done, then I can move all the wax paper. And, and I'm going to start with the maroon. Okay, I'm going to just start with the maroon. I could just do this with my fingers and I might. But I'm just, yeah, I think I will. I'm just going to get in here with my fingers. And then I'll blend it with the... Uh, I'll blend it with the uh, baby wipe. So I'm going to start with some maroon. Now remember, it's going to dry, so you got to kind of get crack a lacking, especially if you want to blend. But I'm going to start with the darkest color for the border. Did y'all think we're never going to get back to this? <laughs> this is why you need the wax paper, see? So, I'm just going to get a border around it. Let me move my little cutouts till I get to that because they're I'm going to end up they're going to end up on the floor with the wax paper shiveling them around. And I do want to use some of the stencily thing here. Okay. All right. So, we're going to create our little scene. So I just want to get started here. So now I know that that's where the border is going to be. Okay. Just getting the edges. So now that I can, got that down, I can move my uh, wax paper out of the way. Because it's really annoying, you know. <laughs> uh, I didn't go into the... Don't go into the, I'm not afraid of going in the woods. I'm not afraid to do that. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to move that now and get my heat gun and dry the edges here. I would just like to preserve I would just like to preserve the information on those graves, you know? We're not going to turn it into a Blair Witch Project, okay? <laughs> Have no fear, Miss Vicki. <laughs> but I'd like those people to be remembered, you know? I mean, and it's like grown over. You have to really know exactly where it is to find it. Huffster knows. I know, and it's the same thing with like old photos that you find in, you know, thrift shops and antique stores. You know, you have all these old photo albums. You thought, you know, you we call them found relatives. You know, once you once you buy those pictures and stuff. But, you know. I, I understand it. All right, for instance, I'll give you an example. Mr. Victor Crafter, he, I guess, was out on trash day or something and came across somebody had thrown away piles of old um, photo albums. And, of course, he can use them in his crafting, you know, in his art and stuff. He doesn't know who they are, and apparently the people that threw them away didn't know who they were either. <laughs> Okay, so now that that's dry and I've got the edges done, now I can take my scissors and turn over. See, now the paint cut got on the other side. Doesn't matter. When we get to that side, we'll paint over it. But I want to trim off the napkins that are hanging over. So if there's any place where the napkins are hanging over, I'm just going to trim, trim that. But I would like to, you know, rescue their names can't do much about the actual site but I mean I don't even know who owns the site but it's not like 
fenced off. It's just in the woods. Hi, Leanne. I hear you talking about cemeteries. Our local genealogy society read all the cemeteries in our county and printed a book. See, that's awesome. There is a cool cemetery. I can see it from the highway. It's like in Macon. It's, or oh, maybe it's before you get to Macon. It's heading south in Georgia. It's not far from here, but it's beautiful. And then, of course, um, I've visited, you know, there's all kinds of grave, um, I guess you call them cemetery, not graveyards, in Savannah that they have the ghost tours. We went on one of the ghost tours in Savannah a few years ago, me, Denise, and Cam. Boo was too little. It was kind of scary. Even Cam was a little scared. <laughs> But anyway, we weren't going to take Boo on the on the ghost tour because they, they take you into an old pirate house and they turn off all the lights and it is kind of scary. It would have been too scary for Boo at that time. She'd probably love it now. But um, but anyway, they take you to the, I think it's the Bonav 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 Bonaventure graveyard. They take you all these cemeteries. <laughs> Oh, Miss Vicky. I guess, Miss Vicky, do you even go out on Halloween? <laughs> Just asking. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, but I would like to do it to preserve the names on that on that their, their headstones. I think it's a whole family in there. I just got some found relatives at a huge family tree dated 1872. We'll post. Okay. Did you get it at a yard sale or were or, or they your family? Were they left to you, Julie? Yeah, and the ones in New Orleans, of course, they're all above ground because they can't bury them because of the water level. So they're all in mausoleums. You know, they're all above. You know. Now, I don't know. I, I might be thinking about those at at night. <laughs> Oh, the show came. oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and then Miss Aroma, uh, everybody was asking about you this morning. They were just asking about where has she been. And here you are. It's good to see you. Yeah. Um, one day I was up here streaming and there was a big crash downstairs. And I said, okay, I don't know what that big crash was, but I'm going to go downstairs if I don't come back. <laughs> or if you hear me scream. So, I mean, it was loud. I think y'all could hear it, too. So I went downstairs, and what had happened is one of my bookcases, you know, that those little metal, those little metal screwy things that hold up a shelf, you know, those kind of shelves you build, and one of the shelves had, was just so overweighted with books, it collapsed, and it then it collapsed down into the second shelf, so it was a big crash of books. But, yeah, I did. I went down there to see what happened. <laughs> I was a little shaken, but, you know, I creeped around the corner. And did I look in the den? I looked in the great room. I looked in the kitchen. Finally, my dining room is turned into a, a library. So I peeked into the <laughs> library, and that's where I saw the books had all crashed down. <laughs> oh, well, good. Yeah, it's good to jibber-jabber with the fibs. Yeah, well, it's good to see you, Mr. Roma, because everybody's been asking about you. Okay, so now I'm going to, I want a little bit of water. Let's see here. But I don't want to, like, like really saturate my, my, this, because I don't, I'm going to, and I might have to go back and forth, some watered down, some not. But I want to paint them, and I, I don't want it solid paint, because we'll lose everything. So what I'm going to do is spray some water in a tray, and then I can kind of just use this water over here on the side to wet down some of this paint. All right, let's find a paintbrush. There's my Inktober paintbrush. I'm not going to use that. Let's see. Probably still has ink in it. Let's see. Here's just a nice little flat. So I'm just going to kind of wet a little area down here with the scissors so I can um, water down it enough to still see through it right and I'm gonna paint her it you know there's an edge I'm gonna paint that in but first I just want to get a wash down a wash of paint 
on their clothes. And then maybe a little sienna, maybe a little shadow, a little bit of water. Because I'm watering this down. Maybe a little red. Let's brighten that up a little. I just want color. You know, I just want a little color on them. And then when I have put their little teacups in front of them. Oh, Halloween, it's my Christmas. I just like to scare yourself. <laughs> Miss Vicky. I know you like Halloween. That's why I was kind of wondering. You just so you just said she just likes to scare Miss Vicky says she I just like to scare myself. They're so cute. Oh, Alright, so I'm gonna take some of this red and put it some water to it. And then she'll have a red like well maybe I should have let me kind of back some of that out. Oh, and the other thing is because they're covered with matte medium, look, here's another benefit of matte medium. So because they're covered with matte medium, look, I can put down color. But because it's coated with matte medium, I can just wipe it completely away. See that? So there's another benefit of matte medium. So I'm just going to get her little, like, hood or, like, little cape. Maybe she has a little hood, like, little red riding hood. Maybe around her head there. Like a little cape, you know? Like that. Hey, Crafty One Cent. Crafty One Cent. <laughs> hey, Denise in New Jersey. Okay, now I think I'll go with an orange. Oops, didn't clean my brush. And I'm not being over, I'm just, you know, they're going to be like part of the background and everything. It's not going to be, um, this isn't like detailed coloring, right, and painting. But again, you take as much time as you want doing your page. Right? I think this side needs a, she needs a little bit more orange on her. And again, I'm using fall, all fall colors. All right, now let's do the little owl. Let's do him, let's start with a sienna brown on his chest here. A little bit of water. And then there's her um, branches coming across there. And I'm just going to kind of get rid of the white. Because all this is going to be painted in. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and just get all that in there. And we're going to have Essence of Fall Leaves all in here. Let's go in here with a little Sienna. I mean a little ochre, and I'm watering it down just to get all this background painted in. Because I'm gonna, I want this kind of light right in here because I'm gonna put the leaves, the stencily bit, this, and then I'm going to, and look that little butterfly leaf. I mean that little butterfly that was on the page looked like it's a little wing. So, well, Miss Vicky, well, let's grill you. I mean, ask you some polite questions, Miss Vicky. How do you like to scare yourself? <laughs> so, y'all can see I'm just trying to get rid of the white paper, but I'm doing it with the wash so I can still see everything, right? This is just a, a you know, base. Okay, then I think she might have... Let's have her have a maroon kind of hair in there behind her. I really think I need, I'm going to need a darker brown. I don't know if a darker brown. Oh, that's purple. Where's my dark brown? Right here we go. <clears throat> 
put out a little burnt umber and probably just a little bit more of the maroon because I use that up on the edges. It's all going to come together, people. Trust me. <laughs> uh, I hope anyway. I hope. Okay, so there we go. I want our hair to be a little darker. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Kitty. Kind of looks like Santa. <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, let's go with some orangey yellow hair on her. Don't be afraid. Okay, maybe, we, well, I was going to say zoom in, but maybe, maybe not because then you can't see the whole page. And I'm kind of trying to do the whole page here. Okay, Miss Vicky, I love going in the woods and scaring the people I'm with by telling them that I heard that sometimes people go missing and tell them about the hold, hold how do you say that, hold do, hold, hold do folk or Bigfoot roams the woods looking for their next victim, love to just plant the seed. Hubster loves to do the Bigfoot thing to the, to them, to the kid, to the kids and the nieces. Oh yeah. If anybody goes down there to the lake or anything, it'll go now. Look out for Bigfoot. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so I'm going to use some of the watered down burnt sienna here. And again, I'll like paint in close and get rid of the edges. Right now, this is just like a base coat here, right? <laughs> so you do go out in the woods. So you you are just you are just uh, fooling us. You're really not afraid to go in the woods. <laughs> so you can see you can start you know blending in things here. And I'm not really, you know, up in here, like where it's a whole bunch of mixture of colors. I'm not even cleaning my brush. I'm just kind of like, you know, blending a whole bunch of colors together. <laughs> Don't scare me, Miss Vicky. I, I have got, I will win in the woods. I've messaged Dee <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to pick some up with my finger now up in here. And see, I can just do more textury like things if you just kind of do it with your finger rather than brush. See that kind of look right here? You just, you know, that's just so much easier to me just to do it with your finger than with a brush. But whatever works for you. a little bit more of that orange in here and see I'm getting all the background done because now after this I'm going to paint the branches all on top okay so got to get all the background done first just kind of working around let's go with a little bit of the burnt ochre It's really pouring out now, raining outside. There's the occasional little green one, little leaf in there like that. Mix a couple colors so it doesn't look just flat. Miss Vicky. I love scary movies. I love to listen to podcasts like Lore at Nighttime with headphones on alone. I also read the I Can't Fall Asleep section on Reddit and all the creepy stories on there. I watch this 
Dan Bell on YouTube. Go to Abandoned Places, also with my headphones on at night by myself. You'll see now, I don't know if I'd do that. That is pretty brave, Miss Vicky. I don't think I'd go to Abandoned Places. Well, it depends on where, you know, where. I mean, you know, I just wouldn't want to run up on, uh, you know, somebody, you know, I don't want to say, I'm not that a homeless person is necessarily bad, but, you know, homeless people on drugs, that would be bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think I'd want to run up on that. I'd be more, I'm, I'd be more afraid of the people than the ghosts, <laughs> you know? Okay, let me pick up a little of my finger here. So you see, I'm not afraid to like go over any of the leaves or any of the parts of anything. I just, you know, if I if I think it needs some color there, then if I'm going over the napkin, that's fine. So you see how it's coming together? Okay, let's go back with some brown over on this side. I don't know. I don't have a lot of... I have a few scary stories, but not... I don't think I've ever could tell a story like an abandoned place like Miss Vicky. He's a YouTuber. Why, the name sounds familiar. Dan... Yeah, D Dan Bell. Well, no, maybe I'm thinking of another Bell. I'm thinking of Art Bell. I'm thinking of the UFO guy. <laughs> And he loves abandoned places like malls. Okay, now, I do watch a show. It's on uh, Vice Network. Now, he doesn't go at night, but he's a young guy. Well, I say young. He's probably in his 30s. And he's and me and, me and Terry watch him on uh, his show on uh, Vice Network. And he's a skateboarder. And he always gathers his skateboarding friends wherever he is, and they go skateboarding in these abandoned places. But that's not the same thing as, like, going in at night, you know, and getting all creeped out in abandoned places. <laughs> I don't think that, I think that's a whole different show right there. I will tell you one story that just came to me while the rain's pouring down outside. All right, I'm going to pick up a little more of that orange. And with my finger and just kind of and I can't even tell you anything else about it except what I saw I mean there's a few things like that that's happened to me but this one really is it's always been unexplained for in my mind some of the other stuff I can you know think well this is what happened okay Miss Vicki I love listening. Yeah, Coast to Coast. That's what I was thinking of. I was confusing that one and the, the one you're talking about. I love scaring my little... And then Teresa says, I love scaring my little sister. I used to get in so much trouble. She still can't watch scary movies, and she's 46. <laughs> yes, I know. And, and the one Terry and I watch is just called Abandoned. And he's a skateboarder, and so he travels to all these abandoned places, and he meets up with all kinds. Of, he, he meets up with skateboarders, too, but he also meets up with people that are in the vicinity, whether it's a, you know, I don't want to say a homeless person. There is one guy that was homeless on purpose. He lived in his van so he could be, like, out of society. You remember that one, um, ter um, Terry? So anyway, I'm just kind of working the background here. But the one thing that really was odd or the weirdest thing, I guess it would be one of the weirdest things I'd ever seen. And if Miss Vicky, if you're still telling stories, I want to keep... Uh, there's a new abandoned coming on tomorrow and New Orleans. Oh, wait, i got to write that down. Because there was two weeks where there wasn't one on, so I thought maybe the season was over. I thought they came on on Wednesdays, though, Terry. But I'll look it up. I think maybe on um, New Abandoned. Um, you watch it on, uh, I watch it on cable. You watch it on Netflix or a D, um, you watch it on something else. 
Okay, so I'm going to keep painting while I'm talking. So when I was probably, I'd say 11 or 12, we lived in a house and we moved a lot. Dad was in the military, you know, and we moved a lot. But this is one of the houses we rented. And it was by a highway, but not that close to a highway. It was kind of, well, I say highway. It's not like an expressway. It was like, it would have been like maybe a, a busy two lane. <laughs> but it was like a major road, right? And let me see. Maybe I should kind of do a little visual. Do I have a piece? I'll do it on black paper. With white paper. So we lived in a house, rabbit trail. We lived in a house, say, right about here. And there was a, a highway that kind of was over here. Now, granted, there was another, there was this, our street here, and there was probably another street of houses there. But then right over here was, it was, maybe it was a four lane. I don't really remember. And there was a big school right here. This is where we went to school for that year because we moved a lot. But there was a school right here, and then there's house, there's streets right in here. But right here on the highway, there was an overpass, right? There was an overpass right there across the highway. And one day I was sitting out here. It's on the 31st, not tomorrow. Oh, it's on the 30. Oh, okay. Let me write that down. All right. Thanks, Terry. Yeah. I at least want to DVR it so I can watch it. Whenever. I still haven't gone back to watch the one on Route 66 to draw my to draw my 30s diner, but whatever. <laughs> okay, and I don't really remember a lot. I have very limited memory of my childhood. I don't know why, I just do. Uh, my sister can say, oh, remember when we went? No, don't really remember that. And, and sometimes something will trigger a memory, and my, it, my sister says or something. But I just don't remember a lot. I was, I'm was i always one that's always lived in the moment. Like, I live today. <laughs> so it's like, okay, that's already, you know. <laughs> I just don't remember. I don't live a lot in the past. All right, so there was this overpass right here. And there was, you know, well, I should draw. It wasn't round. It wasn't a tunnel. It was an overpass, like, <laughs> you know, like that. And I was sitting in my yard here or outside. And it seems like to me it was like right at dusk. Like right before the sun, you know, it was still, it was maybe, I would say, like seven-ish. Maybe it was in the summer. I can't even remember the season. Sorry, guys, I really just don't have a real good memory of all that. <laughs> and so, all of a sudden, I saw, and I don't remember exactly where it came from. I think it came from this side. It was a huge, I mean, it was... And I'm not joking, guys. If you could think, not quite as big as like a pterodactyl, but way bigger than any kind of crane or egret. Now, this is in San Antonio. It's not like I'm by an ocean. Okay? It's not like there's ocean birds. This is in San Antonio. Okay? In the, I would say, I guess it would have been in the early, no, it would have been the late 60s, early 70s. I don't even remember how old I was. Late 60s. It would have had been the late 60s. 57, 59. Yeah, it would have been in the late 60s. Um, and a bird came flying down and went under the underpass. And it, it filled up this whole area. That's how big it was. It swooped down, flew under the underpass, and flew away. And that's all I ever saw of it. It was huge. It was huge. I don't even know what kind of bird I could describe it as. Like I said, it wasn't quite as big as like you think. And it didn't look, it was white. Did I mention that? I don't know if I did. White, light gray or white. And so it wasn't like a pterodactyl in the sense that it looked leathery and dark. Or, you know, it didn't look... It didn't look dinosaurish. It would have been more like it would have been like a giant egret, maybe. But it was it wasn't. It didn't have the long neck of an egret that I remember. It was white though. It wasn't like dragon colors, like what you imagine, like 
reptilian. It wasn't reptilian. And it was just ginormous. And it just flew down. And the reason it was so I can't because it was under the underpath flew under. I didn't know, know if any cars saw it. Nobody like stopped or anything because it just flew under the underpass and flew away. No, I was little. I was like 11 or 12, something like that. Maybe 13 at the most. Now I was probably about 12, 11 or 12. I would think I was about 11 or 12. And so that's the only thing that I've ever had really like never explained. I don't know. I'd have to look up what an albatross looks like. But it was the thing is, it doesn't matter which kind of bird it was. It was way bigger than it was bigger than any species known to man. Okay. <laughs> it was like from. Imagine this is like four lane highway. It, even if it wasn't four actual lanes, it would have had dirt here and dirt here. You know what I mean? It was. This was a big overpass, and it filled up the whole thing. No, it wasn't a pterodactyl because it wasn't like leathery. Like, it wasn't lizardy. It didn't look like that. It was a bird. It was the biggest bird that ever existed. Yes, Terry, to me. Okay, so anyway, there's my, there's my creepy story. <laughs> he was silent and singing. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't. It was very, it was silent. I didn't hear any whoosh of wings or anything like that that I remember. You know, like I said. <laughs> but that's my, there's my kind of creepy. I've had a few things happen, but I don't talk about them. <laughs> but that one's kind of just a mystery. See, I would have been calling Josh Gates. <laughs> Okay, so there's kind of the, the, you know, woody area up here. I might need just a little more brown, maybe right in there. So I'm just kind of trying to make it like fall, right? I'm going to add leaves if I get time. I better get crack a lack and stop telling stories here and get crack a lack. And all right, so I'm going to put in some more. I think I need this a little bit darker because if I do the cups, even if they're light, Let's just get some red in here. And of course I can go back and do a little bit more detail on them if I need to, but I gotta get I gotta get moving here. We're gonna run out of time. Alright, this branch here. Okay, so let me dry this. And then we're gonna do a little stenciling. We're gonna do some drawing uh, branches. No, it's not a rabbit. <laughs> It's not like, what's that movie with D Jimmy Stewart and the Big Rabbit? What was that movie? Hey, CB. What was his name? Eileen will know. Jimmy Stewart and the Big Rabbit? It's not that. <laughs> Harvey, yeah, Harvey, the rabbit Harvey. It was white, Terry. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take this. Maybe we might have a little bit of green. I don't know, because we have a little bit of green. Maybe a little green and, I don't know, maybe. I just thought maybe some green, because, like, maybe this is still... Um, not quite turning yet. Where's my like regular old grass green here? I know I got some grass green in here. Forest green. That might be a little dark. Maybe I could put it as a back layer and then put some orange on top. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna put out just a little bit of the forest green and let me get one of my sponges. If you do makeup wedges and stenciling. You want to make sure this is dry. A dry makeup wedge. No water. What year would that have been, Button? 
See, that's what I'm thinking. It would have probably been 60, 7, 8, or 9. Probably 68 or 69. Something like 68 or 69. In 75, there were numerous reports of huge bird in Texas. Really? In 75? This was way before 75. This would have been like 68 or 69. Okay, so now I'm going to dab in the green. And I'm going to kind of strategically look here. Because I don't want to lose them. And I'm going to pick which ones. Where to put it. Can you see that? Maybe this one. And this is kind of in the background. I don't want it to be like a lot of detail because I'm going to put their coffee, their teacups in front of this, right? Their teacups are going to be like maybe yellow or orange. It is kind of, yeah, but if you see, but you weren't here, it was as wide as the underpass. Maybe one of these little dotted ones here. It flew under the underpass. That's why it was so like eye catching. It wasn't like way, and that's how I could tell how big it was. If it was just like flying overhead, the dis you couldn't maybe necessarily tell the distance. So something big could have been really close, something, you know, but it flew under the underpass for goodness sake. Let's see, maybe a little dotted one here. And again, this is just out of card, you know, like not real heavy card stock, probably, I don't know, 90. You know, it's not very, it's not real heavy. But what I'm saying is you, you can, you, and especially if you use paint and let it dry, that kind of almost sturdies up the paper to use this again. But if it starts getting, if you use it a lot and it starts falling apart, it's just the negative space. Okay, Miss Vicki, thanks for stopping in and telling us a story or two. Always good to see you. If y'all don't know Miss Vicki B, all y'all know Miss Vicki B, the planner queen. That's what I call her. The planner queen. Go visit her YouTube. Okay, let's see. Do I want a little bit more? Maybe a couple down here just to kind of fill in. <clears throat> And remember, guys, we're going to do uh, those cutouts as well. Paint those up. All right, so there's just a little bit of something going on there. All right, so let me just kind of like leave it at that for now. All right, now I'm going to put this in the water to so it doesn't get hard. But if it does, you can just cut off that. I can't go look at a button. I can't go look at a link right now. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't look like an angel like you think of an angel. It looked like a bird, Terry. Yeah, it, it could have, it, it would have like, it could have been like the description might have been the closest to an egret. But it didn't have a crane neck that I remember. I don't know. Okay, let me dry this. All right, now let me get out some, I think I'm going to get some black and dark brown because that dark brown is not quite even dark enough, but I don't really want it pure black. So I'm going to add some black to the brown, get out a liner brush or something thin, thin, thin. I don't know if I want it as thin as a liner because I'm working on a napkin. So if you use a liner brush, it's not going to flow, <clears throat> you know, not as, well, maybe. Let me see. Let me try my liner brush. All right, let me, where's my, I'm going to blend this paint together. So it's just, <clears throat> just shy of black. And then thin, thin, thin. Let's see what I can do here. 
Well, yeah, Terry, but I don't know. Maybe it was an angel, Terry. It could have, you know, you know, like you said, could have been taken a form of an angel, of a bird, I mean. So I'm just painting the branches. <clears throat> Some of them I can still see from the color book, but, you know, mostly I'm just making them up. This has just kind of got some water in my brush. <clears throat> See, it's a liner brush. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was a kid. But speaking of stories out of San Antonio, CB, and I think I saved it somewhere. But maybe you've heard of it or you know about it or y'all can help me find it again. There was a painter or a guy that found some paintings. I think that's what it was. Either he inherited them and he's out of San Antonio and that's why I remember it. He inherited some paintings maybe and they had all these symbols and things in it and he spent his life trying to solve them or something. I could have a lot of this wrong. I mean, I seriously could have a lot of that wrong. Like, he found them, and he, or he bought them at a flea market, and he spent his whole life with these, it was, maybe it was a book. Was it a book? <laughs> My story, see, I don't have a memory, of, I can't remember. <laughs> hey, Light and Laughter, well, what's your name? And welcome, have you been here before? I think you have. Hey, Ronja, Wendy. My chat keeps the uh, the chat keeps the last word of your last post. Try to um, Mary. Try to uh, hit your scroll button. You know the the sidebar, the slider at the side. Click it to make it's locked in. Make sure your scroll on the side is locked in. Because otherwise, sometimes the chat gets away. Try that, if that's what you're talking about. So they got all these branches in their heads. I'm over-exaggerating some, making some thicker. And he needs a little more paint and color. This is where I put probably what could use, uh, Mary uses one of those fine liners. Those dimensional, but then they might stick the book shut. I don't know. Mary, do those fine liners stick your book shut? Mary uses those a lot. I guess they wouldn't, or you wouldn't be using them <laughs> in your book, right? I guess they don't stick your book together. Branch heads, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just kind of making them, trying to make them kind of random. Some thicker, some thinner. Thanks, branch girls. Hey, Arctic. But I do want to go to that cemetery to take rubbings. All right, so now maybe that's enough. Let's see, this one needs some more going across here. Well, 
What do y'all think? All right, I think I'm going to do a little splatter. And again, he needs to be able to have a little bit more uh, coloring done to him. Um, or at least have maybe, let me see if I can just pick some. He needs some more like leaves or something coming down into his, because, you know, we cut off half of his head up there. Maybe we'll do some of that in a little bit. Yes, this is all craft paint, if I missed the question. Let me dry this because I got some more layers. Yes, these are color book pages. And the background was started out with some napkins, and you can still see it. I'll hold it up so you can see. Thanks, guys. That reminds me of the commercial where the moose gets the swing set in his horns. Yes, I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> so maybe there's a, let me get a fluffy brush. Maybe there's a little bit of, let me take this green and water that down and do some splatters with the green. Maybe there's still just a little bit of green. It's not going to probably be dark enough. Now well, maybe. I mean light enough. I want to show. Maybe I need a little bit of light green too. Let's see. Let's put a little bit of light green. It might be better. Oh wow. I got way too much right there. <laughs> just a little bit to lighten it up. There we go. Because you still see a little bit of that green from the napkin. I got to do their coffee cups, their leaves, the orange and yellow leaves. Okay, so now I think that's good. Let me dry that and then I'll hold it up for you guys. I know it's kind of far, but I wanted you to see the whole thing. Um, yes, the branches was water in it. Yes, to make that flow. <coughs> the other place that it's water in it is when I did like their little clothes so you could still see through the paint. <laughs> Mary says she uses craft paint in the fine liners. No sticking, but thicker, so let it dry good. Yeah. Mary rocks those fine liners. I think I let mine dry out, Mary. <laughs> I think the needle thing stuck inside, I lost it. So I think I might just need to buy me a new one. Okay, so I still want to do a little bit more painty on him. Let me, um, let me see here. Let me just get a, what brush do I got here? Okay. I just want him to have a little more color or something in him. Let's water that down a little. It's starting to dry out. Just to have, because he looked a little dull up there. <laughs> and then maybe his beak is a yellow here. He's just a little, like, not finished, you know? He needs a little bit finishing touch to him, but we're going to put some leaves and stuff to it. And her hair, her hair needs a little more brightness to it. Remember, she's got a hoodie on. She's got, she's supposed to kind of be like a little red riding hood. So she has a hoodie. Okay, now let's, um, let's, I'm going to set this aside for just a second somewhere. And where's my wax paint? Now we're going to paint some of these things up here. 
not all these won't be here all day but let's paint a few of the little grasses in the front the light green and then the leaves orange maybe the mushroom I don't know this leaf is way too big this is out this one's out this one's in that one can be in this one will be out I'm trying to look I'm looking at my piece over here and the size of it then I want two coffee cups here's their two cups this one and this one this is too big got this leaf these leaves a mushroom remove that coffee cup this one two mushroom yeah well, maybe just one mushroom and these leaves and, and if y'all weren't here earlier I'm gonna try to do a cameo uh, face to face on Wednesday okay so here's the ones I want to use so let me just get another sponge and I'll start with these green ones over here let's get some of the lighter green in there wait more light that's my cue <laughs> brother <laughs> so I'm just going to dab on oops one little there oh the sun looks like it's trying to come out okay so there's those Maybe the mushroom could be black and in the background or dark brown. Okay, so I'm done with the green, so now I've got to get a fresh. See, this one is dry and clean. It's just I cut the red off there. All right, so now let's go in here with some of the red because I think that will be good. Maybe just a couple colors. Let them mix. We'll just do that. more orange and I think they're coffee cups I think I'll have them be black like the mushroom that'll stand out I have two black coffee cups in the black mushroom or dark brown I'm just talking out loud guys <laughs> so I'm just dabbing on random see like look see how it's just random colors you use a long straight pin okay okay yeah i can't ever find anything just to clean out my stickles i'll have to dig around mary yeah okay <laughs> yeah because i think i lost the one that was in it you know and i don't know how all right so here's let's do this one kind of lighter i'll probably just use some eileen's tacky to glue these on all right, now I'm going to go into the black. I'm just going to, you know, go in here with the black, the same, the dark brown and the black mixed here. And I'm going to do the coffee cups to make them really stand out. Oh, we're getting there, guys. We're wrapping it down because we're going to run out of time in 15 minutes. And Janet, are you streaming at 1? And Mary, tell us when you do. I, I never catch your live shows. Do you have a set time for your live uh, YouTube show or do you just do it random Mary's been doing live uh, shows too okay so I think that's good now let's put this in the let's put that in the water and get a baby wipe and clean my hands off I don't have any place to put this let me put it in my lap <laughs> okay all right it's gonna be kind of hard to blow dry this because they're gonna want to blow all over the place but maybe I can do it from a little farther away. Just like kind of hold it down with the scissor. I just want to dry enough to pick them up. At one. Now Janet streams at one on Ustream. Monkey Island Madness, if y'all are watching this recording, she tries to upload them as many as she can to YouTube. Okay, I think they're all going to start blooming away now. Let's move these off the table. 
Let's get all this and put this back in my binder for Wednesday. All right, so acrylic paint dries pretty quick. So, all right, let's come back over here. Move my water out of the way, move my heat gun. I have to clean, sp clear spaces every time. All right, let me get my Irene's tacky glue. No, I hadn't heard from Jean. Jean usually just, she's probably asleep. <laughs> She had a busy day yesterday. I think she was out and about. And then she probably stayed up half the night. No one our Miss Jean. Uh-oh. Let's get the... Let's move these paints. All right. I probably need to do on the break. Hang on, guys. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna finish this up in within ten minutes, guys. Ten minutes. So I hope y'all are liking it so far. Again, it needs a little more detail in the in them. So you could spend more time painting them a little more detail. Um, let me just grab a Posca here. You know, like maybe put some little details on their clothes. And you can do all this with acrylic paint. Um, or like a Posca pen, you know, have some more details in them because I'm just, you know, I've been too chatty today. <laughs> Let's take the yellow here. Maybe some little fringe on her hoodie. All right. So let's see what y'all can see so far here. See the same thing for... This little cap thing could have some little detail here. Spend some time, you know, with your characters. Lace. Some little highlights in the eyes. lashes maybe some more lace on her Maybe a little on her hoodie. So again, you can see you can go in here with paint and play with all the little details that we're not taking the time because I don't want to make this a two-parter. This I'm just going to have a lot so it's kind of technically bouncy. Oh, to do your um, to do your show, Mary, or here? Oh. Okay, so all right. Now let's glue in our. Let's start. I think I'll start here with the front with the little bits of green. So what I'll do is I need that piece of wax. just use a piece of wax paper here to put the glue on the back and what I usually do is let me get another tray I just, it's easiest to just squeeze out a little glue in the tray and pick it up with your finger like that 
and I could do it with the matte medium. It may be a little easier, but I've already put all that away. <laughs> So I don't want to dig all the matte medium and the brush and all that back out. So, but you want to make sure it's glued well, right? You do want to make sure it's glued down well. So kind of tap it down and get a baby wipe. And then just kind of mash it down so you, you're also picking up any excess glue, right? Okay, let me... My glue's a little dry. I don't know why I might need to add a little water to it. Let's make our little girls, and they're going to have their coffee cups here in a minute. <laughs> Is any of the original napkins still showing? Um, yeah. Look, let's see. All back in here, here, see all those lines right there? It's still showing, trust me. You just, it's just blended in. Um, let me see, well, let me find one that has a little bit less. Okay, like this one, see all the blue flowers? I didn't cover those up as much. But these are girls in the forest in the fall. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let me get another one here. Oops, I dropped one. Okay. Don't want to run out of time. I don't know why my glue's a little. Let me get the other bottle. Maybe this bottle's the old bottle. This one? Has this one been opened? Is this a new one? Maybe this is a new one. Yeah, let me open up this new one. Okay. Hang on, guys. Let me get out a little more glue. Okay, I need to cut the tip. It's too thin. Alrighty. I love that they put these caps on them now so you can have them standing up. That's ingenious. Cause I, you know, have to, you know, I used to keep it in a jar, my glue bottle, in a jar, pointing down, so it was always ready to go. And now that they put those little caps on there, yeah. Melissa, how, thanks everybody for being here. If I've missed, this is just one of our napkin journal projects. We haven't done one for a while. All right, let's see. A couple of these other little ones here. Yeah. Maybe one kind of behind her here because... Just because. And maybe I need one more right in here. One of these little ones here. Oops, didn't get that glue. See, I'm gonna lay it out here. Maybe it just 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 kind of needs to go right in the front of them. There. It's almost like they're in the little tea pot cup cups. Like that. Okay, I'm going for it. Again, just picking up some glue on my finger. And this will bring, you know, the black around the page, too. From the uh, branches. One more. 
Before it goes. I'm kind of not looking at check. I'm trying to stay with the tour here and get this done before we run out of time. Which could be any second. So at least let me lay out. Let me lay out where I'm going to put the leaves so if we get cut off, y'all know what how we ended up. <laughs> so these are the leaves that we have. And where's my mushroom? Here. I'm thinking the mushroom like back in here maybe. I don't know. Maybe we don't need the mushroom. Maybe it won't show. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want the mushroom. I don't know. Because I don't want it to look like it's floating. You know, there could be ground back there, but I'm, I'm thinking not the mushroom. All right, so let's see how I'd want to lay out these leaves here. See, they're not really showing up very much. They almost need to be lighter, right? Need to have a little bit lighter color. Where's my yellow here? Let's see if I can lighten this up. Almost could use some brighter yellow. Let's see. There we go. See, that's what it needed. Maybe a little more on the edge of this one. <laughs> You're welcome, Daisy Vicky. No, I know. Everybody wanted to see the napkin journal, and I thought a fall page would be good because uh, these are the napkin Sharon uh, L scent that were wrapped around. Um, Divas. Uh, maybe let's maybe we can put one in, coming out of each one of their heads. That might look cool. That one's not working on her though. Maybe a little tilt. Okay, something like that. There's five of them. So what do y'all think? How's that look? Now let me clean my hands and I'll zoom in. Uncurl this edge. Could almost use a little black around the edges of the page, but I'm out of time to do that. You know, darken up the edges with some black. Okay, so I'm thinking this might be it, guys. Again, take more time to do details. It's really busy, isn't it? <laughs> it's busy. It's a busy forest. All right. So let's do a quick peruse, and I hope y'all enjoyed it using the Juliet Crane Whimsical Creatures and the Monster Girls. I might do a couple little, little more branches, but I'll glue these down. I'll glue these down after a while. You don't need to watch me glue. But I do want to clean off my hands. All right, so let's see here. These are the napkins for the next project. Maybe this one down here. No, I like that. I like that. Okay. It wants to change colors on the camera, but. What do y'all think? I think it's kind of 
is kind of cute. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to stop this recording. And I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed working in the napkin journal. <laughs> I'll do a couple more little ruffles and maybe a couple. I might lighten up the little leaf on the side a little more just so they stand out. But I think it's kind of cute. You're welcome, Button. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for hanging out, Mary. It's good to see you. I can't wait to see part three of Sebastian. So if you're watching on YouTube, thanks, guys.